Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro. In today's video I'm going to take a look at the joysticks. As you can see I have a pretty good collection of joysticks on my desk right now and uh, yeah I have collected those uh, yeah, the last couple of years. Not that I collect on them but I have gotten them with various machines that I have uh, got and also I had a couple from a uh, long time before so we're gonna take a look at those and a lot of those are not working very well so I hope to at least repair some of them and get the, the status on all of those joysticks. Alright, let's take a look at what we got here. Uh, there's 20 joysticks here and uh, one set of paddles. Uh, I know I have a couple of more, but I couldn't find them. Um, I don't know what all of these are called, but uh, these are rather good known brand, Tac 2. I got two of those. This is a Quick Shot 2, and there's a Super Shot, and this one is a Wyco Command Control. Yeah, some other <laughs> non branded ones. Couple of more quick shots. This one, Zip Stick. What's that? Captain Grant. Very dirty. More variants on this. Uh, is that the Competition Pro? Not really sure. Very dirty one here, another Captain Grant. These are the Atari paddles. Gonna take a look at those. This is a quick shot joystick for uh, the Spectra video. And as you can see, it has a different connector. This is, uh, I think it's 14 pins. And the last one is this, it's in bits. Uh, it's a Commodore joystick. Uh, I think all the parts are here, except uh, this one is uh, broken off, and I think this is the same uh, that I used in the Atari uh, 2600 joysticks. So I might be able to print uh, this part to fix it. I just make a brief stop here to thank my sponsor PCBWay, they are sponsoring this video. If you need to have produced some new PCBs or uh, 3D parts for your hobby projects, uh, then you should definitely check out the uh, PCB way. They make uh, good quality PCBs and I have used them uh, many times. If you visit pcbway.com, you can get an instant quote on uh, very good quality PCBs for uh, affordable uh, prices. And if you have advanced needs for PCB manufacturing, then check out their advanced PCB options at pcbway.com. I'll start by testing all the joystick to see how they work. I know several of them are not in very good condition. So um, yeah, I'm gonna make a note on every joystick that I test. And for that, of course, I need some uh, numbering system. <laughs> So I make a methodical test here and uh, label all the joysticks. All right, everything is labeled. Now I'm gonna make a spreadsheet and uh, test all the joysticks uh, in various ways. Uh, but before that, let's take a look at uh, the history of these type of uh, joysticks and how they work. All of these joysticks use uh, the Atari joystick port, uh, except for one of those, and uh, that is a nine pin D connector that was originally introduced on the Atari 2600 uh, game console back in uh, 1977. That port quickly became a de facto standard in the 80s and 90s on many 
computers and consoles. It went cross-platform with the Commodore WIC-20 in 1981. And it was later used on most home computers and consoles. The port doesn't uh, only support joysticks, it supports a wide range of special devices, uh, including the ones I have listed here. Then in the mid-90s, when the IBM PC took over the market, uh, the port was discontinued and was replaced by a 15-pin analog joystick port standard. A little bit of technical information about the port. Here you can see the pinouts uh, for the 9-pin port and the uh, what all the pins are connected to. And as you can see, pin one, two, three, four, and six are the directional switches and the fire button switch. And uh, these are simple on and off switches uh, that are connected directly to some IO port on the computer. It might vary from computer to computer, but uh, the pins are pulled uh, a number of times per second, mostly during the vertical blank interrupt of uh, the computer. Then the values on each pin are registered in uh, some register or memory location, uh, depending on the machine. Paddle A and B are analog inputs with uh, potentiometers connected to the 5 volts that vary the voltage on pin 5 and uh, 9. And they produce uh, a value between 0 and 228. Originally on the Commodore 64 it's between 0 and 255. On the C64 these ports are read by one of the CIA chips, uh, while the paddles are read by the SID chip. Here we can see the Commodore 64 uh, schematics and uh, here we see control port 2. Control port 1 is uh, uh, further down, not visible here. And we see that pin 1, 2, 3, 4 and 6 are connected uh, directly up to the CIA chip 1. And the port BX and port BY are connected uh, directly up to the SID chip. We also can see that the control port uh, shares the connection with uh, the keyboard input, which is here. Goes onto the same uh, I.O. port on the CIA chip. The C64 reads uh, the input from the joysticks into two register in the CIA 1 chip. It's uh, DC00 and DC01. And when an input is pressed, the value turns zero and when it's not pressed it's a one. So it's the four direction plus the fire input that is placed in the five lower bits of these locations. So here you can see when uh, none of the buttons or directions are pressed and uh, nothing is pressed on port two then we have a one into all the five lower bits uh, on that register and that is a uh, value of 127 decimal and if you peak uh, that uh, register 56 320 you get the 127 and in this diagram uh, down and right are pressed and also the fire are pressed and here we can see that the bits have changed to 00101 which is a decimal value of 101. The C64 paddle registers are a little bit different. It's in the SID and it's D419 and D41A that will contain the X and Y values for uh, the paddles. However, to use this register, you first need to uh, set up uh, what uh, paddle you are going to address by using a DC02 register. And the code for reading the paddles is a little bit more complex than the joystick input and you can't reliably read those uh, values from basic you need to use uh, machine code routines all right that was a little bit of uh, history and how a joystick works and uh, now let's start testing all these joysticks and i have cleared my desk here and found uh, a condor 64 this is the machine i recently repaired and there are several test programs that you can download and use for testing joysticks, but I just typed in this uh, simple basic program here. I found this program in the Commodore 64 usage manual, I think. <laughs> uh, I just copied and um, yeah, it simply puts uh, some 10 
or 11 strings into an array, then it loops forever and the peaks uh, the registers I talked about, 56, 321 and 56, 320, and then it does some bit shifting here, and then it just constantly prints uh, the result of uh, the joystick porch. So let's run this now. The first joystick I'm gonna test is this one, number 13. I'm not gonna show you testing all of those joysticks. That will take a lot of time, but uh, let's start with this one. So it says uh, J1 and J2. I have connected it to uh, port two. So uh, let's see now, uh, left, yeah, right, yeah, up, nope, up doesn't work, uh, down works and fire. Both fire buttons work and if you have it in the corner like this, down and left, it shows down and left, but obviously not up. Okay, so now I know that this needs a check on the, the up <laughs> switch. So now I'm gonna load one of the other tools that are, uh, yeah, I put them on the memory card of the Pi 1541. And the casing is obviously wrong. I already tested this one. It was a little bit fancy. <laughs> uh, joy test. Joystick tester. And it has some nice uh, SID music as well. I'm gonna turn that down. Let's see if this works. Yeah but the up doesn't work and it doesn't display uh, the corners when you have uh, two switches pressed at once, but uh, as long as uh, the individual directions work, then the corners, uh, the diagonal uh, positions also work. All right, so I will go through all of the joysticks now and uh, note down in this uh, spreadsheet. And then I'll be back if something interesting shows up or uh, else I'll be back when I have tested all the joysticks. Yeah, I found this uh, joystick tester program as well. It's uh, <laughs> some like a demo with music and animation as you can see, and it has the arrows in the middle. So yeah, and this joystick seems to be working perfectly fine. Or maybe not so good. Uh, up and down, left, right works okay, but the diagonals, uh, down and left works. But uh, yeah, right and uh, down and up and right seems to be hard. This one, the zip stick, left, right, down works, not up. And as you can see, the cable here is um, off. It's ripped off this cable restrainer, so need to fix that. This QuickShot 2 Turbo seems to work okay on the directions. Button seems a little bit, the top button does not work. And this has an auto fire, let's uh, test that. Yeah, that works. All right, that was all the joysticks tested and I'm gonna reveal the results uh, pretty soon. Except for these two, uh, this is a mess. I need to uh, connect everything. You can see the PCB is even uh, broken. I printed out the replacement part. I'm not really sure if it uh, fits. It's not uh, exactly like the original one, but uh, it might fit. And this one is for um, the Spectra video. It's a 15 pin um, analog joystick. So I'm gonna do a separate test on that. And now everything is a cable mess here. <laughs> and here's the result of the first 18 joysticks. And uh, yeah, as you can see, uh, almost all of them had some issues. Only two of those I have uh, declared as 100% okay. Most of the others have a little bit bad contacts. Some of the switches doesn't work at all and yeah. So now it's time to start fixing all the joysticks and the majority of them are pretty dirty as well. So I'm gonna clean them real good. 
Oh, and I almost forgot these paddles. These are Atari paddles, but uh, they should work on the Commodore 64 as well, at least uh, on some games. I don't have any way to test them, but uh, I have a game. And this game uh, can use the uh, paddles and uh, let's select uh, two players and uh, see if it works. Yes, the button at least work on the paddle. <laughs> and what better game than Arkanoid can we use for this test? <laughs> yes, yeah, look at that, it works. Pretty good. Oops. Yeah, it's very precise. Okay, so player two is probably the older one. Oh, this is a lot more scratchier. Look at that. It moves all over the place. So this uh, pot needs to be cleaned, obviously. <laughs> and I also looked more closely on this, the Commodore joystick and uh, yeah for one this isn't the same height and uh, yeah it is simply not the same at all so can't be used and the other thing is that uh, the screw all the four screw fastenings are broken off and the pcb is uh, cracked so uh, <laughs> this one is beyond repair but uh, here we can actually see how some of the early uh, simple joysticks uh, works so there's these uh, small metal switches that press down and they flex and make contact and we can see that all the inner parts are connected to the same uh, trace and that is the ground and these are just then connected to uh, the wires for uh, the joystick port so i'm gonna <laughs> throw this away or keep it for some spare parts sometime later if uh, ever I get one of these. I tried to look for uh, the correct 3D model but uh, I couldn't find one. All right it's time to start fixing some of the joysticks. Uh, I don't have a lot of spare parts. I have a few micro switches uh, if I need. I'll start with this one the TAC2 and this looks uh, really good but uh, it had uh, some bad contacts on the left and uh, down. Yes, so uh, we'll open it now and check it out. But uh, first I'm gonna clean it a little bit with some uh, alcohol. A little bit dirty. And a little uh, contact cleaner in the contact. And I'll do this cleaning on all the joysticks. I'm not gonna show it, but uh, yeah. Good to have uh, them cleaned up. So there's uh, three screws. we're in and those uh, buttons are very dirty <laughs> I just clean a little bit inside the whole case here okay so here we can see how this works it's a very simple system no switches actually it's just metal on metal you can see the the buttons here have uh, metal contacts and uh, this metal plate that uh, pushes down and also all the directional uh, uh, switches are just uh, metal contact that this metal <laughs> ball here is uh, touching and you can see it's connected to, uh, to ground and yeah so I think the only thing we can do here is to clean up those contacts with some uh, contact cleaner wait a little bit and then try and clean off uh, probably some oxidation here yep 
Yeah, and I think we can take off this, yes. Yes, look at that. So maybe if we bend the contacts a little bit forward, uh, it will make a little bit better contact. Yeah, see that uh, yellow <laughs> mess. <laughs> Oh, look at that. <laughs> I'm probably overdoing this, but I'm also using a little file just to file down a little bit on the contacts, make sure they have a good metal surface. Or perhaps it's better to use this fiberglass pen. Okay, I think that's enough for this joystick. Uh, we need to speed on here or I fear this video will be very long. <laughs> I'm not gonna show uh, fixing all the, the bad joysticks. Um, but uh, some of the interesting ones I'll show you. Okay, let's see if this works any better now. Okay, left and down was bad. Oh, no way they work perfectly fine. Yes, look at that. Hopefully you can see <laughs> The indicator in the middle here. <laughs> so I couldn't figure out why the buttons didn't work and I even tried shorting them with a wire but uh, still no uh, triggering of the fire. So I suspected that the, the tester program was uh, the fault and indeed it was. Uh, I tried this other one and yeah both buttons work fine so this joystick is now very good. All right, that was the TAC2 and uh, I declare it here as fixed, 95%. Number two here is some kind of Competition Pro clone. It doesn't have any labels or anything. Just gonna open it. It uh, was uh, kind of working, but a little bit uh, uh, bad uh, contact. So I'm just gonna clean it up. Yeah, and here we can see it has these uh, micro switches. So you see the mechanism pushes those small micro switches in. Unfortunately, these uh, switches aren't uh, easy to open up because uh, if you need to clean them with some uh, contact cleaner or anything, uh, yeah, I have not been able to open uh, this without uh, breaking it but uh, maybe it's possible and the button switches are just these metal parts here that uh, touches when you press so I'm gonna clean between here I can see there is some green like corrosion between so needs a good cleaning with a little uh, contact cleaner there's more green stuff down here, so uh, yeah, I think this has had some liquid inside and also it's so very filthy. <laughs> Try and clean it up a little bit. Yeah, and that's all I'm gonna do with this. Over to the next one. Ah, now I finally saw it. It says Competition Pro Joystick here on the uh, side. Yeah, let's test. Yeah, no, this works perfectly fine. Next is this one. It's a Quick Shot 2. And uh, yeah, 2 Plus. And it was okay, but uh, the fire button was a little bit bad. I'm gonna open it up, clean it up a little bit. Very long screws. 
This is a Spectra video joystick made in China. I think I had this back in the day. This is very nice and it has these suction cups. Okay, let's see if we can open this. No, it came out. So this has an auto fire and uh, because of that it has some electronic circuits. And uh, yeah, these are the directional switches. It's these springs that uh, are pushed down. So when you pull on the joystick, it pushes down this spring and there's a micro switch uh, sort of there. Otherwise it looks to be in good condition. Just gonna spray a little contact cleaner here. To reach uh, the buttons, I need to open the handle. There's three screws on the side here. Oops, <laughs> that was a spring loaded. Okay, yeah, it's the same type of switch. So probably needs a little bit of uh, contact cleaner because uh, the switching mechanism itself seems to be good. All right, is it good or what? Yeah, very nice. So uh, just a little cleaning is all that's needed on many of these, obviously. This is the Vico command control and this uh, was working 100%. And this seems like a very good joystick. Very silent, uh, yeah. Uh, but I'm uh, just gonna open it. Uh, I'm curious to see how it looks inside. It's uh, made in the USA. Okay. Everything is in the top. It has the same kind of uh, contacts as uh, yeah, the quick shot. It's a little bit dirty. Yeah, and the top button pushes down <laughs> in the middle. All right, just gonna clean a little bit and then we're done with this. I fixed the second attack too. It uh, had uh, different faults. It had several uh, issues, a left not working and uh, bad firing buttons and cable retainer was broken off. I have glued it and cleaned the joystick inside. Let's take a look. Left works fine. Every direction works. Buttons. Yeah, very nice. Okay, so this is uh, fixed completely then. Nice. Next are these twos and uh, I don't know the name of these. It's uh, just called joystick here, uh, no branding. And this seems to be a pretty poor quality. Uh, they're very loose and uh, yeah, light plastic. And uh, the issues was uh, very poor contacts on uh, everything and uh, yeah, a little bit loose. I don't think we can fix them being loose. It might be that the plastics has been worn, but uh, I'm gonna open and clean them. Four screws at the bottom. One had the black screws and the other had uh, <laughs> silver screws. Also gonna unscrew the handle. Uh, it's very dirty, some grime here. I'm gonna take all the plastics and uh, clean it up uh, downstairs. Oh, there's one there. Yeah. And there's a simple uh, spring loaded uh, contact there. So yeah, this is pretty poor quality. Yeah. Oh, look at that. That's uh, yeah, those really poor types of uh, mechanism just some plastic that pushes down on these uh, metal contacts and uh, yeah they seems to be damaged so i don't have new ones i don't hear it click 
when I push, so I guess they are worn out. This one seems to be a little bit better. You hear the click, but not on the directionals. One of them. <laughs> so I'm not really sure if this can be repaired. I have to peel off uh, uh, the plastics then and try and bend them out perhaps. I'm not sure if that's possible. I know you can get these uh, new to repair, but I don't have those. So I'm just gonna pull out one of those uh, little metal contacts and see if I can do anything with it. But this tape was very stuck on there. Okay. Just gonna try and bend it a little bit, see if it gets back the springiness. Nope. So I can't easily fix these, so I'm just gonna assemble them and uh, yeah. At least I cleaned everything, so they are very clean now. <laughs> Let's test. It's pretty poor, but it is somewhat usable. <laughs> but for precision games, I think these are pretty lousy. At least now the button works fine. Next one, this Competition Pro, it's, uh, yeah, it's very nice looking. Um, it had bad contacts, it has auto fire, and uh, as you can see, the bottom plastic has some breaks in it. So I think maybe it's someone has tried to pry it up. There's one missing screw. Let's take a look inside. Okay, yeah, <laughs> so we have uh, broken off uh, standoffs, these screw fastenings. But besides that, it seems to be of good quality, uh, these uh, micro switches. Yeah, screw is still in, so this has taken some beating. <laughs> Plastics are a little bit uh, brittle now, so yeah, it just breaks. And there's a big break here, so I'm gonna try and glue this. Then we have one broken off uh, fastening uh, down here on that side. No, even if this has micro switches like this, uh, they are still bad contacts. So I'm gonna see if I can open this. In fact, it looks like you can. Yeah, that's a good design then. All right, so uh, here we can see the the mechanism. So yeah, it's spring loaded and uh, makes a contact, but of course that contact can be oxidized or dirty. So I'm gonna clean it up with some deoxid. Maybe we can save this joystick after all. I'm gonna do that on all four. So I just took out the contact and cleaned it and uh, cleaning this side. Yeah, look at that. Bit dirty. All right, let's see now. I haven't uh, put uh, back the, the bottom case because uh, I'm gonna wait a little bit more for the glue to set, but we can test anyway. Yeah, look at that. Much better. 
button. Yeah. Extra button there on that side is not working. I'm not sure why, but yeah. Auto fire is working. Yeah, this is much better. So I sell, I'll say this is 85% uh, fixed then. <laughs> Another one, this works reasonably well. Just gonna clean it and uh, yeah. Lots of dirt on that contact. <laughs> okay, okay, over halfway now. And uh, this one, I cleaned it uh, up. It was really dirty, some thick brown grime. Let's see now. Yeah, that works perfectly fine. But uh, poor quality joystick, quick shot. Um, this one at least but uh, can be used. So I lost audio here, so I'm doing a voiceover, but uh, this is the zip stick. And as you can see, the label is uh, pretty worn out, but it seems to be working okay. It has a broken off uh, cable retainer. So let's see now, what do we find inside here? So I'm just gonna fix that the cable retainer with a little bit of electrical tape. Probably won't hold uh, for long, but uh, yeah. So it has these uh, micro switches here and the regular push down switch there. Quite dirty inside. I'm gonna clean it up and see if I can uh, take off the covers of these two and uh, clean them as well. All right, seems like uh, these can be opened too. So I'm just gonna do the same with these. Okay, so that's, this is a little bit uh, different kind than the one from the Competition Pro, but the uh, principle is the same, a spring-loaded mechanism that touches uh, that contact. So I'm cleaning the surfaces there, of course, with some uh, contact cleaner. Okay, let's see now. It's cleaned up real good now. Does it work any better? Up didn't work. And now up works. Nice. Every direction works. And the button. Very good result. Now this cable retainer here is uh, loose. I tried with some tape, but that didn't last for more than two minutes. <laughs> So I'm gonna use a little bit of hot snot glue here. Let's see if that can, yeah, work. Might help a little bit. Not pretty. <laughs> Next up are these two uh, joysticks here, and uh, I have never seen the, this kind before. It says simply Captain Grant, and uh, yeah, they work okay, but they are very dirty. Let's take a look inside. So these are of a cheaper type of uh, plastic, a little, uh, not that hard plastic, and uh, there's no uh, micro switches in this, so this is obviously a cheap kind of joystick says made in China <laughs> okay big spring there on the note I made for these it says bad contacts but but that can hopefully be fixed uh, with some uh, contact cleaner gonna take off the handles as well I'm gonna clean all the plastics in some soapy water Don't want to split. Oh, you just have to pull it out. Oh, it came loose with a little bit of force and persuasion and swearing. <laughs> okay, all the plastics are now free and can be cleaned. So this joystick has this um, spring-loaded uh, metal buttons. They all seem to be fairly okay, but that means there's nothing to do there. 
uh, as I mentioned, if these start failing, you can find new ones and replace them. But uh, yeah, they seem to be okay. And the two fire buttons are also the same kind. So I'm just gonna clean off uh, the PCB here and uh, then assemble the joysticks, clean everything. And uh, yeah, nothing more can be done here. Okay, that was a lot of screwing on these, but uh, they cleaned up very nicely. <laughs> Let's test. Yeah, the contacts are a little bad still, but this is uh, usable, I think. A little bit bad contact on uh, that button. This one works fine. The other one in port 2. Yeah, same. Perfectly usable, but not uh, perfect. But uh, then again, I don't think these were good from the beginning. Next is this quick shot uh, 2 turbo. It was uh, okay, but a little bit bad contact. So uh, I guess I'll clean those uh, micro switches. There it is. Yeah, this has these open uh, micro switches. They all work, but uh, probably need some cleaning. Now, this is a little bit interesting. Um, it has an auto fire circuit here, as you can see, and uh, yeah, it seems some uh, homemade uh, LED uh, arrangement here. Someone has tapped into the wire so uh, when you push the button the LED lights up I guess <laughs> not really sure if that is a good idea but uh, yeah okay I clean this up let's uh, test actually I just found some plastic bits uh, down here where uh, the ball is uh, is rotating and uh, yeah there were some grease I'm gonna add a little bit fresh silicone grease there so that it will run with uh, less friction and uh, less uh, squeaky noises perhaps oh I forgot need to take a look at the handle as well okay no wonder the top button doesn't work because uh, the switch is not there however the front button works I'm gonna clean that up That spring-loaded mechanism was a little bit uh, difficult, but uh, yeah, now it works. Let's test. Yeah, very nice. Perfect uh, contacts. Button two. Let's try auto fire. Yeah, it works. And here you can see the LED. It's uh, on all the time, but when you. <laughs> push the button it turns off <laughs> this is the same joystick and uh, it's missing uh, the button for the auto fire and also missing one of the suction cups but otherwise it works okay so I'm just gonna clean it up not gonna show you that that's cleaned up let's check it out yeah very good both buttons perfect and the Auto fire. Yeah, it works, but uh, you need small fingers to activate it. <laughs> Good one. All right, we're almost finished. These are the three last uh, joysticks, and I'm now starting to get <laughs> pretty sick of uh, unscrewing joysticks, but uh, yeah, it's uh, nice to have it done. So I'm gonna take a look at this now and uh, this one says up does not work. 
yeah and it feels a little bit worn out I'm not sure if this can be fixed but uh, let's give it a shot it's hard to see but it's a zip stick here on the side doesn't look much like the other zip stick but uh, yeah oh <laughs> one more screw Okay, seems a bit odd, uh, okay, so it has micro switches, so then I'm just gonna open all the switches and clean them up, as you've seen before, that's a lot of work but it has to be done. Luckily these switches can be opened and uh, some of them actually are soldered to the wires and I guess maybe all uh, of these kinds of micro switches can be opened but uh, sometimes I have tried and uh, I just broke the plastic and couldn't take it off in one piece but these are good. Oh no these are of another kind seems like it's not possible to open these hmm. nope these are shut nope seems i'm able to open this after all yeah nice <laughs> i was afraid there for a little while it's a different kind of mechanism but uh, yeah it's based on the same principle as the others just a little contact cleaner in the contact and uh, then this is ready to be tested and uh, I just noticed that the cable has a break here so I'm gonna use yeah, just some electrical tape Test. Oh no. <laughs> this is completely <laughs> not working. Um, I think I uh, assembled it uh, the wrong way. The switches are not in the correct position. But all the switches do work. I opened it up and uh, now we're gonna take and switch it around to the correct direction okay not only did i have the wrong direction it also had these switches assembly upside down so completely wrong okay now it should be good yeah up didn't work before now it is working yeah this turned out to be <laughs> a very good one seems like <laughs> the last two these uh, clear Competition Pro joystick. This is a Competition Pro and this says Turbo Pro So they look uh, almost identical and uh, yeah, they have uh, these micro switches So I'm just gonna tear them apart and clean everything and uh, Then we are done and ready to test. I clean it up It says on my sheet that it has a bad right contact and it is a little bit squeaky so I'm spraying a little silicone spray, maybe that helps. Let's check, had the bad right contact, yeah seems to be good now. Buttons, yeah and it's silent so the silicone spray fixed the squeaking. The final one of these Atari style uh, joysticks and uh, yeah this seems to have taken some beating, cracks here and there, probably someone had a little rage while playing and it is supposed to have a turbo <laughs> button here but it's uh, missing. Just gonna clean it up and see if it improves and on the note it says that uh, all the buttons were okay 
but on the diagonal movement it was uh, not very good. So I guess a little cleaning will help them. Yet another type of uh, micro switch. So I'm gonna clean those up and then we'll test. Turns out that the one of uh, the micro switches is damaged. Uh, the little spring uh, is broken off and it doesn't work anymore. So yeah. So I have a replacement switch here, a new one. So I'm going to try and use this. Seems to be uh, the exact same size. Some of the wires are soldered onto the contacts. Need to desolder this. All right, that's fixed. Let's see now, does it fit down here? Oh, look at that, I found a one of the screw holes. All right, that's fixed. And I also glued on that uh, screw stem there and I'm gonna let it dry and then ready to test. Last joystick to the test. Oh yes, perfect. Only thing with this is that one of the screws didn't take, so it's a little bit loose uh, on one side, but uh, I can totally live with that. <laughs> this video is almost finished, but uh, there's a couple of more things I want to do. I want to clean up these uh, pads and also this one, the analog uh, Spectra video joystick and see if I can test that. Okay, it's a fairly simple design. It's uh, just a potentiometer here and that uh, changes the voltage that goes to the computer and uh, yeah there's a button clicky thing here to be able to clean the potentiometer i have to take it out there's this screw here oh it doesn't want to come loose hmm. a little force always helps <laughs> And to clean the potentiometer, I just uh, spray a lot of uh, electronic cleaner inside it. And then turn it around a lot. You can of course try to open it up and by bending those metal clips, but I don't think that's a good idea. Probably gonna destroy them. Yeah, and I can see a lot of dirt coming out, so uh, this has an effect. These buttons, just try and spray a little between. Okay, I think that's it. Yeah, look at all that dirt that came out from uh, <laughs> those uh, switches, those uh, potentiometers. All right, let's test paddles and uh, two player yeah still works okay the second one was the most problematic yeah much better now it's uh, perfectly playable it shakes a little bit but uh, yeah that's normal after those many years <laughs> For this uh, analog joystick, I'm not really sure how to test it. Uh, I don't think I have a, a PC with uh, this interface and I thought I could use it on uh, the Spectra Video SVI 328, but uh, that one has regular Atari joystick ports. No, I simply don't have any computer uh, to test this with. Uh, I don't have that old PCs. This type was obviously replaced by uh, USB joysticks uh, sometime in the yeah, late 1990s, 2000s. But I'm gonna take it apart and clean it up. Uh, curious to look inside. 
those screws are really <laughs> stuck. My arm is actually starting to be a little bit sore now because of all this uh, screwing on uh, some very stubborn screws. Okay, we are in. So that's an interesting mechanism when you turn the joystick. It slides uh, these contacts here. Yeah, and those are some uh, variable resistors obviously and gives uh, out uh, different voltages depending on how far you have turned it. Yeah. <laughs> it also has a little circuit board here for um, the auto fire. So I'm just going to clean those contacts and uh, nothing else. It looks okay. A uh, little bit of uh, dirt and dust inside. Yeah, as you can see, it's uh, quite uh, dirty. <laughs> Buttons are on the other side of uh, this little uh, board. So uh, let's uh, inspect. Yeah, and it's those uh, open micro switches. So obviously you're gonna clean those. Finally, a little uh, silicone spray on some of the moving parts. A little bit of cleaning. All right, that was the last joystick. Uh, too bad I can't test it, but I'm pretty sure it works. And uh, yeah, this seems like a nice one. Has auto fire and some additional uh, sliders here and uh, those two buttons so this is meant to be used like this or you hold it in your hand like this need to find a machine i can use this on <laughs> just one last thing take a look at this setex spectrum this is one of the machines that didn't have joystick ports it didn't have dedicated ports so uh, you actually needed an interface to use joysticks and uh, there's something called a Kempsen interface. Uh, I actually got one here. This is uh, a combined uh, tape image loader with the Kempsen uh, joystick interface. So with this you can load games from a memory card and also play with a joystick. I have tested this in another video a while back. So you can take a look at that. And this one is called the Frankenstein. The Set X Frankenstein. All right, that was it for joysticks. <laughs> Pretty fed up of joysticks right now, but uh, yeah, it was good to give them all a service. And uh, yeah, we can take a look at the results. So this is the results. And uh, yeah, in fact, they all cleaned up to be uh, good joysticks. And uh, they are all now uh, usable. Uh, I have given them scores, 95%. Some are down at 60%. That can be due to some damages like uh, missing screws or uh, yeah. But as you can see, everyone except for um, the Commodore joystick that was completely ruined, uh, turned out to be good joysticks. So I'm pretty pleased with that uh, result then. <laughs> All right, that was it for this video. It uh, became uh, quite long and I used a lot of time on it. I think I have screwed joysticks now for five days and uh, yeah, but it was worth it. Uh, the result was good and I now have a lot of joysticks to play with and even sell if I want to. And it has irritated me a lot of times. I have picked up a joystick to test a game or something and it hasn't been working very well. So. Now I have all those fixed and uh, as you can see it's just a matter of uh, cleaning using some electronic uh, cleaner spray and a uh, little bit of lubricating and uh, yeah. A couple of the joysticks couldn't fix uh, those uh, small metal contacts. Uh, I'll check around and see if I can find uh, such contacts and then I can fix those as well. 
All right, as always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and a special thank you to my supporters at Patreon. See you, bye bye.